What's going on guys? If you want to use your phone as an HDMI camera, let's say you have your iPhone or Android, doesn't matter, and you wanna use it as a main camera or as a secondary camera for your live streaming, I'm gonna show how to do that. The good thing about using your phone as an HDMI camera, it's actually the fact that it's going to allow it to be more reliable. So why am I saying that? Because if you're using some wireless options, chances are you may have some issues with connectivity. Wireless is wireless. It's never 100% reliable. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to use an app called Filmic Pro to be able to actually send an HDMI signal into OBS and of course be able to go live. So let's not take much time. Let's go get right into it. When it comes to gear, I already have the gear kind of already ready for me. So I've got my iPhone. If you use Android, there are some other gear that I will actually recommend. Mostly the only difference is going to be this little adapter. So you're going to need to get an adapter for an Android phone. For iPhone, you're going to get this little adapter called AV to HDMI adapter. And you're going to need an HDMI cable and a capture card or any HDMI switchers like something like the ATEM Mini Pro or the ATEM Mini. Anything that takes HDMI in should do the job. For this setup, I'm using a cheap capture card, of course. That's not super, super expensive. That costs about $15. So connecting is going to be super easy. What you need to do is connect this little device into your phone. And this part here, this is where you're going to connect your HDMI cable. Take one end of the HDMI cable is going to connect into the adapter right here, like so. Our capture card here, what it's going to do is we're going to take the other end of our HDMI cable is going to connect into the capture card, just like so. And now this USB part, this is what's going to be going into our computer. So let's go ahead and connect everything to the computer and let's see what we get. Once you have this, you are good to go. And of course, you need a copy of OBS for streaming and a computer, of course. So now what we need to do is you need to go to the app store to kind of get started. Just type in Filmic Pro. For me, I already have it. And once you open it, it's going to look like this. Now, this application has so many cool features, especially if you are into filmmaking. If you want to use your phone to kind of film, not just live stream, you're going to have a lot of fun with these applications. It's going to allow you to record in 4K. It's going to allow you to record in 2K. It's going to allow you to record in full HD, change your frame rate, adjust your white balance. This is like a pro application for this kind of stuff. Of course, there's some other applications out there that you can use. But in my opinion, this is the best. Now, it's going to come with the price as believe is something i don't remember how much but you can have to pay monthly so make sure if you using or if you want to use this application maybe make sure you kind of using it on a regular basis if you can just find that price there's another application that i recommend in a different video and i'm gonna link it down below so you can check it out because that one you're gonna pay i believe something like one dollar it's a kind of one-time fee. It does, it's not super advanced uh, compared to this one, but it's still going to do the job. Now, as you can see, everything's uh, kind of connected together super easy. All right. So what we need to do is I need to go to Filmic Pro because you can see all the information on the screen right now. So I'm going to go ahead and actually mount it. Okay. And right now I'm using the rear camera. If I want it, I can just use the front camera and look at myself. But for now, this is what I need. It does the job. As you can see, I can monitor my audio. If I want to bring in audio from the iPhone, I can do that. Two key things that you need to know about the application for live streaming. For filmmaking, it's a different game, right? The first one is to get what's called a clean HDMI. And the second one is to get your white balance, of course. And the third one, I say two, but you need three, is to get your resolution right. So let's go to settings. We're going to go before we do a clean HDMI will be the last thing that we do. We're going to go here where it says video. And as you can see, it's going to give you quality options. You can go up to 4K, but we're going to go ahead and actually use 1080p. We don't need 4K, so we're going to go ahead and use 1080p. 8-bit should be okay. We don't need 10-bit. 
because most of capture cards we're going to be using are going to be a bit and then for the quality for me i will probably go with filmic quality i think that's fine you can play with it and see what works better for you for the aspect ratio keep it at 16 by 9 and that should be it all right for audio we don't need to do anything honestly we're not gonna be using audio from the device before we go to hardware to get a clean hdmi out we're gonna go to this color thing here and we're gonna set our white balance you have an option to have auto white balance but in my opinion that's the worst idea if you want to have a professional stream maybe you already have another camera filming you you need to be able to match the two images or match the white balance of your key light so now my key light is actually at 5600 kelvin i need to make sure i match that choose 5600 kelvin it's not there yet, but it's almost there all right all right so you want to make sure you match exactly your key lights white balance all right once you have that the tint you can keep it at three I mean zero you don't have to play with that if you need to play with it maybe if you need to match your camera maybe you can play with it but usually you should keep it at zero you don't have to play to mess up with that again these are things that i will kind of play with and make sure everything's precise because it's mounted here it's kind of tough for me to get it right but that's it once you have your white balance kind of ready the next thing that you need to do is get what's called a clean hmi so as you can see now all the information on the screen and you need to get it go uh to, to get it disappear so we're gonna go to hardware and then where it says clean hmi out and then boom and then hit OK. And then as you can see, it says to kind of connect and reconnect. So I need to disconnect this and reconnect it back. And then I should be able to get a signal. Boom. So we got a clean HDMI. Boom. So now I'm using a front camera that faces me. Usually that's not the camera that I recommend. But for the sake of this video, I just want to make sure you guys can see my face. And then boom, as you can see, I look good. You know, we got some autofocus and everything and i think i look perfectly fine so that's pretty much it guys so now i have everything set up in obs now because this is maybe your first time i want to show you how i actually did it so we're gonna go ahead and actually delete everything so we can start from zero so how i did it we're gonna go ahead and click to our scenes add a new scene and we gotta call it our phone just say call it phone hit ok and then on the phone here, I'm going to hit the plus sign and then go to video capture device. And then let's say iPhone and then hit OK. And then here we're going to go to device and then we're going to look for our video or our video source. It's going to be our USB video here. All right. Because that's our capture card. Right. And then that's it. As you can see, the image is right there. Everything is good. This is the iPhone camera and you can actually go ahead and uh, for resolution you can have it custom and then hit 1920 by 1080 and if you were bringing in 4k probably that's possible i never tried kind of live streaming in 4k using an iphone but my capture card doesn't support 4k so it's probably not possible but it's something to test out if you want to stream in 4k i don't know never tried it with my phone so that's pretty much it just hit ok and then boom your camera is there and of course you would need to use some other scenes as well uh, to add your audio add your microphone and everything that's for another day or another video but i just wanted to show how you get your camera into obs and as soon as you're ready the only thing you have to do is just hit Go live if you're going to live to YouTube or Facebook, doesn't matter. So that's it, guys. That's how you do it. Now you can go live using your phone through HDMI with the chip capture card and then boom, get a nice kind of looking picture for your viewers using OBS. Now, if maybe this is not your main camera, right? Let's say this is your secondary or your third camera. For someone like me, maybe I want to show behind scenes of my streaming setup or i just want to it's an extra angle that i want to show maybe a top down shot or whatever and i don't need it all the time so let's say the reason why i'm saying that if it gets disconnected for a few seconds it won't be a big deal 
because if it's your main camera and it gets disconnected because it's connected wirelessly it's a problem because people are not gonna see you they're gonna look at a black screen for two seconds which is a disaster if you're live streaming it's not professional but if it's not your main camera you can get away by actually using the same concept but wirelessly and that's what i'm gonna show you in my next video where we're gonna be using a wireless app the video is gonna be linked right here and i'll see you guys there Thank you.